There are two core elements of any photographer's photographic toolkit, a photo editor and an asset manager. For many people, Adobe Lightroom fulfills both of these roles, and it's this dual function that continues to draw photographers into that contentious Adobe subscription. But if you've cut ties with Adobe after the late unpleasantness, or you simply prefer to separate your editor from your asset manager, then your options are relatively limited. And what do you do with all those old catalogues and data anyway? The ones you've built up over years in a varied collection of other photo apps. The French developers Syme believe they have the answer to that question with their unified asset manager, Peak2. Version 2 was released in late July 2024 with some sizable upgrades and a series of 11 point releases to date bring the current version to 2.0.10. The question is this. Can Peak2 tan my ADHD generated quagmire chaotic photo collections, sprawling 40 years, eight hard drives, three cloud services, and myriad miscellaneous catalogues? Will Peak2 be the Marie Kondo for my digital photo clutter? Keep only those things that speak to your heart. <laughs> All right, my photographic chums, before we get into this, let's do a quick bit of housekeeping. I like to properly review software rather than fanning about with the sliders for 10 minutes and then reading you the press release, which means that my reviews are a bit longer than average. So feel free to use the chapter markers below if there's a specific feature you're interested in you know, skip straight to the conclusion if your attention span's been stuffed by the infinite scroll of social media. Secondly, this video will show as sponsored. That's simply because I got supplied with a serial for the software so I can use it properly and not because I'm being paid cash to do it. I take my editorial independence very seriously. I'm not a member of this app's affiliate scheme or indeed any affiliate scheme because personally, I don't feel you can trust a review from someone that gets a cash reward for every sale made for the software company. Okay, let's get into it. And before we talk about the new stuff that's in version two, let me explain what I liked about version one for folks who might be unfamiliar with this app. I first installed Peak2 about 18 months ago and loved its ability to ingest an incredibly varied range of existing photo catalogues. Whether you've just got a bunch of photos sat in a folder somewhere or it's all stuck in Apple Photos, or you're a power user with Capture One or Lightroom catalogues, the odds are the Peak2 can index its all. And it's worth reflecting for a second on the power of that. For instance, I had multiple Lightroom catalogues, and up until I got Peak2, there was no way of searching across all those catalogues at once. Peak2 has some strong main features, and one of the best ones, without a shadow of a doubt, is the multi-library support. Over here on the left, you can see all of my sources. So they've got source volumes here and the actual source libraries. This is my main Lightroom catalog. Underneath it, I have my Apple Photos library with all the various photos that I've taken. And I've also got my video library, which is all the videos that I've archived over the years. And I can search across each of these individually or I can search on them independently. So if I click on all sources at the top here, I can search every Lightroom catalog I have indexed and you can add up multiple Lightroom catalogs. I can add Capture One catalogs in here, Luminar Neo catalogs. You can search across all of them at one time. So for instance, if I wanted to search for sunsets on the beach, for instance, then I can do that and it's gonna search across all of the different catalogs, no matter where they are, no matter what source drive they're located on, and no matter which of the supported catalog formats they're located in. 
In Lightroom, you literally have to restart the entire app when you open a new catalog, and none of those catalogs can see what is in the others. With Pig2, I can open my landscape catalog, my work catalog, my family catalog, and the numerous smaller single project catalogs I've created over the 15 odd years I've been a Lightroom user. I can view them all as a single entity and search across them all as a single entity. Then I can add my Apple Photos library, the unindexed photos I have languishing on dusty hard drives, my Luminar and Capture One catalogs. It even supports Aperture libraries. I can also make albums, either manually or smart, that straddle all those various source locations. What? P2 excels at in ways other asset managers don't even get close to is helping you find specific photos or selections of photos. It can tap into some of the metadata in Lightroom, such as the star ratings, but it also heavily leverages AI with a level of sophistication that is steps ahead of the competition. My favorite search tool in P2 by some margin is conversational search which enables me to use text prompts to find precisely the image or images I'm searching for. What this means is it frees me from the chore of keywording because the AI understands what's in the photographs. The most powerful tool in Peak 2 as far as I'm concerned is the conversational search tool. To use this, click on the little search bubble here and just use a phrase to describe what you're looking for. So let's say for instance, I wanted a drone shot of the coastline and we want to only select in the current context let's open it up give it a broader tolerance level and you can see we've got lots of lovely search returns you can be as creative as you want with those search returns let's say you were looking for photographs with a certain color theme so how about ocean photographs of an orange sky there we go so it's not pulling in keywords to do these when you add your lightroom or whatever catalog you've got to peak to it runs ai analysis on them all and then you can search using the ai analysis and it's all done locally nothing is sent to the cloud from my perspective as someone who has a fairly chaotic organizational system the conversational search is worth the price of this app on its own. Sim released this major new version 2 back in July. And since it's now mid-October, you might be wondering what took me so long to review it. The truth is, I had some issues with Peak 2 2.0, and I wanted to give the developers an opportunity to fix them before I reviewed this software because they were simply bugs and not underlying flaws. I've been in regular contact with the dev team at Syme who have been proactive in assisting me with those problems. Specifically, the app had issues updating its index and was failing to create thumbnails for photos added after my Lightroom catalog was originally indexed. After an aggressive point release schedule that's seen Syme push out 11 updates since 2.0 in July, the app is now running better than ever and I can now deliver my review. So let's get into the new features in version 2 of Peak 2 and the big ticket item is the addition of video indexing. The reason I'm excited about this is that you can use the AI search to search within a video. You can use those same conversational queries as you do with photos and when you get a short list of search returns, you can easily scrub backwards and forwards on the clips to see if they're what you're after. I have a media library set up in Keyflow Pro that took months of exhaustive keywording, rating, and tagging to set up. In Pick 2, I can now automate a lot of the same processes and have the added advantage of flexibility of AI-based searches. Support for video files has been on the roadmap for Peak 2 for quite a while, and it's nice to see it now released and fully realized in Peak 2 2.0. In this instance here, I have indexed my video library. It's just a big old hard drive full of all the clips I've made over the years of the good ones that I want to hang on to. And you can see them down the page here in this Mason review. If I hover over a clip, 
I can scrub backwards and forwards through it to see exactly what it looks like, whether it's something I want to use. You can search in all the same ways that you can with photos. So you can search based on keywords or ratings on your file hierarchy, on the date and time, or you can use a conversational search. So for instance, if I wanted to search for uh, cars in a small town, then I can quickly find all these clips. So again, these are not keyworded in any way. The software has run some AI analysis on them and ascertained that these are cars and this is a small town and returns those search results to me, which makes it a fabulously great way of searching through ponderously large archives or video libraries, particularly if you haven't been too fastidious about adding keywords to them. That support for video is awesome, but it would be great to see the kind of deeper integration with video editors like Final Cut Pro or DaVinci as they have with the photo editors. New in this version is a timeline feature used for setting date ranges for search returns. It's a visual tool with a horizontal graph showing the frequency of content in each day, week and month. The timeline tool is another helpful addition to peak to while it helps you quickly and easily narrow down your search range. Being a landscape photographer, I don't have a heap of portraits in my portfolio but Simon have really stepped up their game for photographers who do shoot people, so to speak. The face recognition now uses AI to index people, but it can also access and leverage any existing face recognition metadata that you added to your images using Lightroom or Apple Photos. Here's the best bit though. You can use conversational search with that face recognition data. Andy looking happy, for instance, or Andy at the beach. Once you find the photographs you're interested in, you can either export them directly from PeakTube or edit them in any app you happen to have installed. There is no doubt that PeakTube is a powerful and extremely useful app, but no software is perfect. Here are a few of the drawbacks that I've identified since I started using it. PeakTube is a great aggregator of media files, but communication with catalogs such as Lightroom and Capture One is a one-way process. It can read the data, but it can't alter it. This limits the usefulness of accessing those Lightroom catalogs. There are undoubtedly technical reasons why catalogs can only be read and not written to, but it would be awesome to be able to curate a collection of images in Peak2 and generate an album within a Lightroom catalog that could be viewed when Lightroom was launched. At the present time, there aren't any file management facilities in the app either. You can't, for instance, right click on a file and then delete it. You can view it in the finder and then trash it, but it's definitely a two-step process. Looking at Syme's roadmap for Peak2 file management is scheduled for the next big release. And while the third party album feature isn't scheduled, they are promising a more unified round trip process for indexing, editing, and re-indexing photos and videos. In terms of other issues, in previous versions, I had problems with stalled AI analysis of Lightroom catalogs, but those appear to have been resolved. It's not a drawback per se, but I haven't found the AI Insights tool to be of any value to my work as a photographer. The app assigns aesthetic, technical, and colorfulness scores to photos, but the selections seem quite arbitrary to me, and I haven't used this feature since I originally installed the app. And depending on the size of your catalog, you could be in for a decent weight during the original import. Admittedly, mine is at the extreme end of things with nearly a quarter of a million photographs, but it took more than 24 hours to fully add the catalog, index it, build the similar photo index, and complete its AI scan. This latest release of Peak2 is a strong update, and adding video indexing is likely to open up the app to a whole new audience. The core premise of the app, namely unifying your photos and enabling you to view, search, and export from across the entire archive, remains a singularly powerful tool. The new face recognition features work well, and since they're integrated with the facial data already collected in Apple Photos and Lightroom, 
it avoids unnecessary duplication of tagging. With this release, the developers have freshened up the interface and the placement of toolbars and icons is more logical now. Symes roadmap for Peak 2 shows forthcoming future upgrades include support for stacks, file system level asset management, and improvements to resynchronization and relinking of source libraries. These are worthwhile upgrades, many of which were posted by users on the sign Trello board, which demonstrates the company's willingness to listen to its customers. All things being equal, Peak2 remains a great hub, creating digital bridges to a diverse range of photo and video archives. By concentrating purely on the asset management side of things and not being diverted by editing, the app proves to be a great standalone choice for bringing unruly media collections under control. Do you use a standalone asset manager or do you rely on Lightroom or Capture One instead? Let me know in the comment section below. If you got value from this content, then please hit the like button and consider subscribing for more photo, video and drone related content from me. Till the next time guys. Ta-ta.